One of the most difficult tasks in budget filmmaking is a set design. Without a lot of money, a small army of carpenters, it's extremely difficult to make your set look like an ancient room or a command bridge of a high-tech spaceship or an alien planet with three moons. Typically, efforts of turning your cousin's basement into a secret government research lab will end up looking like your cousin's basement. They're coming back. Fusion changes all that. Using a powerful 3D camera trigger note, you can enhance set design with surprisingly little effort. This video will cover the most important information about camera tracking, how to get the best camera tracks, and we will look at exporting the scene to Blender. Camera tracking uses sophisticated photogrammetry to recreate a virtual 3D scene that corresponds to the physical set in your live action scene. The position, movement, and focal lens of your camera are recreated in Fusion 3D space along with special locations of your landmarks within your scene. While the intricacies of photogrammetry are far beyond the scope of this video, here's the simplified explanation of the process. The camera tracker uses the relative speed and movement directions of items in your scene to determine where they are in space. For example, when you ride in a car or train, you observe that objects closer to the car move more quickly than objects in a far distance. The camera tracker used this motion parallax to calculate the position of each element in the physical scene and calculate where the virtual camera should be to replicate the same parallax within the computer. The PC used here can be found right here, but in short we are using RTX A5000 with Ryzen 9 5950X. This calculated parallax works convincingly as long as everything in your shot is nailed down. Objects within the shot that exhibit independent motion such as picky actors who always seem to find their way into the visual effects shot can confuse the calculation and produce poor results because their speed is not dependent only on their distance from the camera. Therefore, before we begin 3D camera track, we need to use garbage mats to exclude everything that we don't want to track. I've shot a simple scene that will require rotoscoping to make this better for you to understand the camera tracking process. Let's jump straight into Fusion and begin 3D camera tracking. Add both Polygon as well as the camera tracker. Use Shift B to resize the Polygon accordingly and Shift A to select all the points. Scrub through the clip to make sure that the shape is consistent and fits the screen. Reshape the polygon using the shape box or individual points in areas where it needs refinement. Using Alt left or right arrow keys will move the playhead to the previous or following keyframes respectively. Control left arrow will move to the start of the render range. If you are using multiple polygons, make sure your paint mode is set to subtract. You may need to organize your work using underlays. The underlay surrounds your selected nodes, making it easier to locate and move these nodes as your node tree grows. Rename every node or underlays using F2 key. With all the manual labor out of the way, it's time to set up the camera tracker and let it do all the hard working for us. In camera tracker's inspection, enable preview auto track locations. The small green dots indicate the features that will be tracked if we were to begin tracking now but we want to add a lot more of these features to improve the tracking data. We can always delete these features later on if they are inaccurately tracked. Reduce detection threshold to around 1.8 and minimum feature separation to around 0.01. Bidirectional tracking means that the tracker will work twice. It will track forward and rewind. You don't really need this, but we will take it for argument's sake. So basically, detection threshold determines how much contrast an image feature must display for it to be considered trackable. A minimum feature separation determines how close tracking feature can be to be considered unique. By lowering these sliders, we should get significantly large amount of trackable features displayed in the viewer. Click out of track at the bottom to begin tracking. The camera tracker steps frame by frame calculating the position of each tracking point Obviously, the more tracking points you have created, the longer the process will take. When it gets to the end of the render range, 
the tracker moves backwards frame by frame to refine the existing points. Once after tracking is completed, we can begin entering camera parameters and finally calculate the 3D representation of our live action set. While Fusion can estimate much of this information, the more information we can provide on the camera that captured the scene, the better the result will be. Often the information is locked on set, but we can examine the Eclipse metadata in Resolve Metadata Inspector to see if the useful information is listed there. This footage was shot on Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera using a focal length of 25mm, so we can enter this information already. We can often ignore mild lens distortion. Let's jump into Solve tab and click Solve button. An average solve error of around 0.5 means that, on average, any digital environment work should be just over half a pixel off at most. For high resolution 4K footage, this is a borderline workable, but for lower resolution 1080p footage, it's more than acceptable. Typically, you want to get this error value and ideally below 0.5. No matter where your average solve error ended up, we can refine this and try to get 0.5 or below. The average solve error is also called reprojection error because it measures how closely the computer model of your live action set can predict and recreate 3D location in physical set. Imagine replacing your live action camera with a digital projector placed at exactly same location as the camera pointing at the same direction and using the same lens. If your virtual set is perfectly reprojected back onto the scene using the virtual camera image, every projected pixel should line up perfectly with the objects in the physical scene. If the reprojected pixel miss their mark, that's a reprojection error. Self error is measured in pixels and refers to, on average, how far pixels are misaligned from the original scene. Looking at the viewer, most track features appear green to indicate the reprojection fit. You will also see a few track features colored red to indicate that they are unacceptable reprojection error. To improve the overall self quality, you can delete these features with high errors. Solving is a computationally demanding and RAM-intensive process, but it is also an iterative process as you refine the calculation. Deleting too many tracking markers and resolving can cause problems when your computing power is not up to it. If you plan on doing multiple iterations, it is advisable to make a copy of original camera tracker note after each solve. The inspector provides for an easy way to select trackers when manual selection is difficult. The maximum track error determines how poorly a feature was tracked during solving phase. And the maximum solve error determines how poorly a feature reprojects based on a final scene. In the solve tab, set the maximum track error to 0.2 and maximum solve error to 3. Click Select Tracks satisfying the filter to select for deletion all the tracks with worse than the ones we just have set. Click Solve again to resolve the scene with leaner, more accurate samples of features. At this point you have achieved the goal of reducing the solve error a little lower than the initial results. It's probably not worth the effort to further reduce the error. At this point, the camera tracker node has computed a virtual 3D scene that matches original live action scene to within slightly more than half a pixel. But before you play with the new scene, you need to establish some ground rules. In fact, you need to establish a ground. The camera tracker has no access to the camera accelerometer data, so it doesn't know if the camera was level, tilted, upside down, or on its side. Before you begin working with 3D scenes, you need to tell the camera tracker where the ground is located. Click Export tab button at the top of the inspector. Then click the Disclose arrow next to 3D Scene Transform. The option of setting ground planes aren't visible until you switch to Unaligned. In the Aligned menu, choose Unaligned. The option to set the ground plane becomes visible in the Orientation section. In this and almost every 3D coordinate system, X is a horizontal axis, Y is a vertical axis, and Z is a depth axis. So the default XZ plane is typically a ground plane as defined by horizontal X and depth Z 
direction. In some shots, the ground may not be visible. In such case, it might make more sense to use another plane to identify the ground. For example, if the green screen wall has clear tracking features, selecting the XY plane would allow you to lock the camera direction to the green screen wall even when the flow was invisible in the shot or didn't track well. Select the points accordingly. In the orientation section, click set from selection. Camera tracker adjusts the scene rotation to align with the selected feature tracks. Finally, you need to tell the camera tracker where the origin point, the center of our 3D universe should be. It can be anywhere that's convenient. We'll select the feature track point from the center of the table and set it as our original point. Select the feature with a reasonable low solve error. Now that the ground plane is set, it's finally time to export the solve 3D scene. Reset the unaligned menu option to align to lock the ground plane adjustments. At the top of the inspector, click export button. A group of five nodes representing the created 3D scene is automatically created in the node editor. Congratulations, you performed your first 3D track. The new nodes create the 3D scene that includes Merge 3D, Camera, Ground Plane, Point Cloud 3D Node, and a Camera Tracker Render. With the 3D Camera Track performed, now it's time that we take all the quality data and turn it into a movie magic. You may need to export the tracked information to use it elsewhere, like Blender, Let's do that quickly by adding FBX Exporter. In the track scene, we need to connect only 3D Mesh or Mesh 3D. Another fusion we can export the track. I don't use fusion for 3D placement but Blender. So in Blender we can import the 3D scene and set the environment there. Not to stretch the video, I have already set the environment and exported the visuals using ACCG and we can composite this back in Fusion. I hope you enjoyed the video and hopefully you understand the camera tracking concept. Watch this video next and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers. Please Lord give me a sign, a sign. I feel like I'm losing my mind. Is everybody in the world dying? Please Lord give me a sign.